as John has basically just said there, science of provides software to the global oil and gas industry. John's basically covered a few of the points there, but actually the, the two points down the bottom I think is an interesting uh, part because it's what I'm really going to talk about today. Sciencesoft have 90% of our turnover coming from abroad, but we have no offices overseas. All of our sales are carried out from our office in Glasgow government. It's carried out by four sales staff, and we basically regularly travel around the globe. We have local agents and representatives in certain countries. So for example, China, India, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, in the Middle East. We will have agents covering those areas to give us local representation. But apart from that, all of the actual sales activity is actually done via and from the Glasgow office. Basically, we started our sales process in 2000, and this is actually a startup, so it was from scratch. We had no sales whatsoever. For the first two years, we basically focused on actually getting sales in the UK. And I think one of the key processes there is, is to try and find out what is the route to market your product actually takes. Is it a direct route? Is it via distributor? What's the, like, the, the basically sales cycle for your product as well? Through that first two year period, we found out it could take anything from six months to 18 months to actually get sales. So we could look at using that as we look to potentially look at abroad. But what happened then, we started getting feedback after two years that, well, orders were slowing slightly. And then we started getting feedback that basically people in other countries were actually making the decisions at a high level in the area we were actually involved in, in the oil industry. So the question is, what do we do next? We had to start looking at international markets. Okay, but we did have some problems with that, much as the same as I'm probably having problems with the pointer here. But uh, we didn't really know much, if any, Anything about the international markets we were trying to target. We had little to no knowledge, although we knew the customers in the sense they were oil and gas companies, but we had little to no knowledge of, you know, the contacts within the companies, our language skills are very limited, so we had to look at what could we actually do to actually target the markets. The answer to that was we needed to do some market research. And that market research encompassed a few different areas. First of all, we had to look at items like the risks involved in traveling to the markets, both financially. We had to look at where maybe the competitors are. One of the good things you can do if you're actually looking at markets overseas is look at where, if you have a competitor in the UK or Scotland, where are your competitors trading internationally? If they're trading internationally in one country, there's a good chance you can go and compete with them there. At the same time, if they're not maybe moved into a country, there's maybe an opportunity for you there. We also had problems with just looking at the cultures again, looking at you know what is it like to sell in Japan, to sell in China, etc. Having done our market research, and again, this is just looking at how can we block the global empty sectors that we can deal with we basically came to the view that really you can chop the world into five main segments. And actually many of the companies in the world already do things like that. You've possibly heard of Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. You'll have heard of North America, etc. So basically we looked at developing the world and dividing it out into five segments. Europe and Russia, North America, Canada, Asia, Africa, Middle East, and South America. But within that, we then split it further down into focus countries. Obviously in oil and gas, we're looking at, for example, UK and Norway are the two main countries to look at. In North America, you're looking at obviously the USA and Canada, and a little bit Mexico as well. So having basically divided the world up,
we basically looked at there's really two ways that you can try for global sales. There's one way which I would call the low cost and the low risk method. And that's basically placing your salespeople in Scotland. Another way that actually did this to keep the cost down is actually did what was called an OEM agreement. An OEM agreement or a licensing agreement is where you basically take your product and sell it to a company that has the international distribution channels you're after. But again, you have to sell at a lower price. So, for example, maybe more than 50% margin. In our own case, we signed an OEM dealership agreement up with the Halibut Mars Oil and Gas Company. And basically, they, we then rebalance their product as their product. That contract's been going for seven years now, and we've actually just extended it for another five years. And it brings in a single digit percentage of our turnover now, but at the start, it was a lot more. And it was good to get international exposure and international sales. As well as that, you can have agents and obviously dealers and other type of dealer agreements. However, there is another method, and this is not the method we went, but it certainly is a method you can use, which is a higher cost method. Higher cost method, you're looking at having offices in the countries you're looking at selling to, having staff in the countries you're looking at selling to, or potentially if you've got particular deep pockets, maybe like a business or buying a product that already has distribution in the countries. We very much chose the first method, both as it was manageable and with the venture capital money we had at the time, we didn't have huge amounts just due to the way we tried to do it, to put lots of offices in place in different countries. We did some international sales planning after that. We basically looked at a two-year plan. I've read said that our sales cycle could be anything from 6 to 18 months. So we had to decide, well, how can we actually do this? So a two-year sales plan encompassed several different areas. So we're looking at, you know, estimating the sales. We always try to go on the low side when estimating sales. The number of times I've seen companies who, when they're trying to estimate sales, for example, going to America, they look at the UK and say, the UK is 50, 60 million, the US is 250 or 300 million, it's five times the sales. A lot of the time it might not work. So what we tried to do is just estimate the sales as being UK type sales. We knew the support infrastructure we needed to do that. And we knew that probably within Europe and in America, we were basically got two years where we should be able to achieve similar penetration that we had to in the UK in the two years previous. Once we started the sales process, when we were successful in those areas, Europe and America, we basically just repeated that after that. This gave us this type of chart, where we've actually, so my chart's a bit at the bottom there, but basically from 2000 to 2011, we basically grew the sales through, first of all, the UK, then Europe and America, then moving on to the Middle East and Asia, and then we're now at the stage where we have four sales staff we're covering four areas. We still have room for expansion ourselves at the moment, and we can also look at South America, and that's one of my targeted areas this year. You've already heard uh, from Anna at SDI, and I'm actually just going to chat a little bit about how Scottish Enterprise and SDI actually helped us with this process. Remembering we were totally new into the export scene, we knew nothing about it whatsoever. Scottish Enterprise have got a lot of different plans and services that they can help you with. They give you a, basically an account manager who can help you identify the types of services that they can buy that could be useful for you. And basically everything I've listed up there, from loan funding, from investment, from smart awards to RD, you know, research and development grants, we have had the whole gamut of those. Absolutely all. The one down the bottom RSA, we're currently just about to take first part of an RSA award because we're about to employ another 15 staff as part of a large expansion. SDI again have also helped us greatly as well. SDI through their energy team and they have different teams that deal in, deal in different areas of the market but the five members of the energy team have been instrumental in helping us take the products out to different markets. For example in India I worked with Alan Henderson from SDI who helped us 
And this little visa is just so I could go and visit agents and actually have a chat to them. Sometimes it's just as simple things like that they can help you with, but it can make a big difference. And again, when we're going to China to meet agents, STI helps us with some visa applications for that as well. So they can be very useful for your whole draft of services. I noticed recently that I've actually got the smart exporter scheme just starting up, and I would encourage anybody thinking about looking at exporting to get involved with it. I have nothing but praise for Scottish Enterprise and SDI, and I'll probably go a bit further and say really, Sangsoft wouldn't be as large as it is today with some of the help they've given over the years.